In this video, I'm going to be going through the expectation maximization algorithm, but only the derivation. Um, in my next part of this series, uh, I will be doing samples, right? So in this video, it's simply the der derivation, nothing more, nothing less. So uh, we'll just be going through the maths of this. Okay, um, when we when we are doing uh, when we're doing a statistical problem, there's this constantly this problem of maximizing the log. Uh, likelihood of my data okay so if X was my observed data I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to maximize this probability so the question is how do we go ahead and do this right the the big idea of expectation maximization is that we introduce this thing called a hidden or a latent variable now sometimes this hidden and latent variables they're quite obvious as to what they're supposed to be sometimes they're not so but regardless if they're not obvious, you can introduce them. Um, now, the question, if they're asking why do we need to be using this EM algorithm, the short answer is that you know, maximizing the log probability of your data is not, is not tractable. So there is no closed form solution. Okay, so there is no closed form solution to uh, the log probability of the data. So instead, what you do is you introduce hidden hidden variables so that you can make it tractable. Okay, so there is two steps for the expectation maximization. So as the name suggests, you have your E step and then the M step. Okay, anyway, before we jump, we're getting a bit too far ahead. Let's just jump to the basics. Um, now, P of X, the probability of X can be written as probability of X and Z divided by probability of z given x now if you're wondering how this came to be the x and z uh, sorry the, the probability of x and z can be written as probably z given x times the probability of x thanks to the base base theorem okay so this is all coming from base so that's the joint probability now what we go go about doing is say we're going to say log of p x is equal to the log of the joint probability with the hidden variable minus the log probability of z given x okay now this is the tricky part of uh, em the em algorithm and what i'm going to do is i'm going to minus this log q of z i'll tell you what q is mind uh, and so I minus it from here I'm going to add it over here so minus log qz so effectively I'm adding zero right so there's um, there's net, no net change uh, but it's important that we do this step because now what we can say is that this is equal to log probability of x z divided by qz um, I'm going to write plus minus the uh, it's it's a bit I got my reasons but you see hopefully soon enough z q and x divided by q of z okay I'm cramming myself over there okay the first term okay so this term over here uh, it will turn out to be this thing called the KL divergence which I will show you in a in a separate video and I'll link it over here. Uh, but for now, take it as it is. Actually, I forgot one thing Bef before I before I tell you this is not the KL divergence just yet. So what I need to do to show that it is the KL divergence is that I need to integrate both sides. Okay. Um, okay. So let so that was ln p x. So in order to integrate this, before I integrate this, I'm actually going to multiply both sides by q z ln p x equal to qz ln the joint probability divided by qz minus qz times ln uh, p of z given x so the, the conditional uh, probability of the hidden variable divided by q of z Okay, so I've just multiplied both sides by Q or Z. Okay, so we've multiplied these two terms and of course this side as well. And the last step to in order to get the final EM algorithm is that I'm going to integrate 
these two sides with respect to dz. Okay, so I can split, split it up going doing this dz. This thing over here, if you look at it, the log p of x term, I can't take it outside the integral term because it has no z terms in there. Okay, so I'm, all I have is this integral of qz. Uh, now, this q over here is a probability distribution. Okay, so because it's a probability distribution and, you, and you're integrating it out, it always turns out to be 1. So on the left hand side, I will just end up with log of px. On the right hand side, so I just I just have these two terms. Okay, so that's the first term is qz ln p joint probability. And then the last term is called. So this term over here, uh, the integration or rather, uh, if you want to think about it this way, so this is called this this is called the KL divergence. Okay. Okay. Um, if you really want another way of thinking about this, it's the expectation of this term under the probability distribution Q. Okay. So anyway, that's not that's not really too important. Too important. Um, so for now just let it go if you, if you if you don't understand that quite quite a bit but this is this is really what's important so this is the um, final mode the final form of the em algorithm okay now the question is why do we need this to optimize that's a really big question right so i'm just going to i'm just going to rewrite those two terms as saying so the first term over here is I'll, i'm just going to name it f of q theta Okay, so by the way, I should have been write, write, writing x given theta, and so any any time I had a theta, I should have been writing any time I had a x, I should have been writing theta, but that's not really too much of a distraction. So minus kl, sorry, plus kl uh, of p given q. Okay, now if you so the reason I wrote plus kl is is because kl is defined to be this. Uh, this term but including the negative sign okay and it turns out that is this is re regardless of what p and q or x or z is it's always greater than or equal to zero okay so that that's a proof that i will probably show you in another video uh, but let's not get distracted so this this term over here is always greater than or equal to zero the reason i wrote p p and as it has a function of p and q is because we are always trying to make it such that qz is the approximation for pz given x. So what we want is this, q of z, so this this really one of the main ideas, qz is approximately equal to p of z given x. We want, if possible, we want to be, make it such that it's equal to, but if we can't, we want to be close as possible to the hidden variable given the data. As soon as that that is equal to, Right, so close equal to. Um, you can see that this is, we end up with log of one because p of z given x divided by q of z, so that's log of one, right? And log of one is equal to zero. Okay, so this kl kl term becomes zero, and since this is so since this is equal to zero, my log p x is actually equal to f q theta. Okay, now just one last comment before I move on to move on to talking about this f term. Now remember how I said this is always greater than or equal to zero. F q theta becomes a strict lower bound on log p x. Okay, so if log p x is equal to this thing, and your k l term is always strictly positive, that must mean this rem the remaining term, the remaining of the the log likelihood, must be in this f q theta. Okay, so in your E step, in your E step, what you're trying to do is set QZ as close as possible to PZ given X. In your M step, what you're trying to do is maximize the probability, so maximize this lower bound. Okay, so we're trying to maximize this lower bound with respect to theta. Okay, so maximize 
f of q theta with respect to theta. Okay, so remember now uh, we set q as close as possible to p. Okay, if you if you got it equal to great, but then you maximize uh, maximize with respect to theta. Okay, now when you're maximizing with respect to theta, um, so as soon as you, as soon as you change it, p will if you set p equal to q, p will not be equal to q anymore because p depends the probability of z given x also depends on theta as well. Okay, so because theta is changing, these two will not, not be equal anymore. So you need to go back to the E step and maximize this. So basically, it's a iteration between these two. You you find out what your approximate Q is, and then you maximize F of Q given theta. Now, just to tidy things up, I'll show you, um, show you how, or at least give you some sort of idea how to maximize this thing. So, uh, okay, so this is what we have, f of q theta. Is equal to q z times the log probability of the joint distribution divided by q of z dz. Now z has nothing to do with the the parameters theta. Okay, so this does not so this does not contain theta in there. So because of that, I and because I'm trying to maximize with respect to theta. I can split this integral up, qz ln p of x z dz using your log rules, right? Th then you have minus qz ln uh, qz dz. But remember how I told you that this term doesn't have any any uh, terms in theta, so this little bit disappears. Okay, I don't need that anymore. So all I need to do is maximize this term. Okay, so this is really what we're maximizing. Okay, so the log of the log of the joint distribution is is usually tractable, right? And Q is approximately equal to uh, P of Z given X, but this is of course in the e, e step. So there you go. So in the e, so this is the final algorithm. Or the final idea that you should be using to do the EM. You need to set it equal your QZ, your approximate distribution equal to, to Z given X, so your hidden variable given your data, and then you maximize with respect to theta. Okay, so you keep iterating until you converge, or at least until you had enough. So uh, that's it for the derivation of the EM algorithm. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. But uh, thanks for watching.